Hello everyone, this is David, mobile developer. A few weeks ago I published a video about the changes that Flutter3 brings regarding the web platform and improvements in the rendering of images. This video got a lot of views and I also received several comments from users asking me to make a tutorial about Flutter3 for the web. So today I decided to create a basic tutorial. And for that I'm going to build a web search engine which I have called Flaggle. In this tutorial we will see how to create a basic interface, as well as web tasks like detecting when the mouse is over an element and detecting the focus. We will also see how to manage the navigation paths and how to enable a direct navigation through conventional URLs. To perform the search I have used an API that I have found in Rapid API. In a normal situation you don't want to do the search locally, but in order to avoid the hassle of creating a backend that is responsible for performing the search and return the results, we are going to do the search locally. Once we obtain the results, we will show them on screen. This screen has almost no design, and I have left it this way on purpose to avoid that this tutorial gets too long. Nevertheless, it should be enough to serve as a base if somebody wants to practice adding more things to it. Let's start with the tutorial. I'm going to start creating a new project that will have the web as its only platform. Now I'm going to create the main model. It would serve as later to control the state of the main screen. I'm going to create the main screen with a provisional text. I will also create the main widget in this file. I'm going to delete everything that doesn't interest me from main.dart and I'm going to run the application to see if everything is ok. The next step is to install the necessary dependencies, but first I will remove all the comments that come by default. I'm going to add Dio, which will be used to make API requests, Go Router for navigation, JSON annotation to serialize JSON, the logger package to write traces, the provider package to manage the state, and URL launcher, which will be used to open in a new tab each of the search results. I am also going to add as development dependencies build runner and JSON serializable that will be used to serialize JSON and the lint package, which I prefer over the default one. I am going to adjust the analysis options file to work with the lint package I just installed. Now I am going to apply the state management to main screen. If you want to learn how to manage a state with provider, I have a series of tutorials specifically for it. You can find the link in the video description. I'm going to encapsulate the search components in this search widget, which will inherit from stateful widget because it will contain a text editing controller that we will have to dispose in the dispose method. Now, in the build method, I'm going to add a consumer that will listen for the state changes of main model, and inside it a column with each of the elements of this main screen. The first element will be the title. I am going to launch the application now and leave it to the side so that you can see the changes that I apply.
Now I'm going to create the text field. Finally, I will add a button that will be used to execute the search. I'm going to make some changes to center this column. First, I fix the size of the column to the minimum, and I will use a constrained box to limit the width of the block of elements. Now we have all the elements centered, no matter what the size of the window is. The next thing that I'm going to add is a button to be able to delete the typed text. But this button only has to appear if the field is not empty. I'm going to add the necessary variables in main model and make the following changes in the text form field. Now when we write the button appears, but when we press it, it still does not do anything. We have to empty the current search in its unpressed callback. Now I'm going to make some visual changes to the search field. I would like the color of the field to change whether I put the mouse over it or if it has the focus. For it, I'm going to create two groups of variables in main model that will serve me to do it. One controls if the mouse is over and another if it has the focus. I'm going to create this private method to know if the mouse is over or if it has the focus. I will use this method in a couple of places. To know if the field has the focus, I will use the widget focus. And to know if the mouse is over, I will use mouse region in the following way. Well, by using these two widgets, we have added a little visual style to the field. I'm going to create an empty method that I'll use later to execute the search. And I'm going to apply some visual changes to the button. This button only needs to be clickable if the user has typed text into the field. Otherwise, it needs to be disabled. Now I'm going to create the results screen, which I'm going to call search screen.
I'm going to leave it that way for now because I'm going to configure the routes using Go router first. I'm going to add this static variable that defines the path where this widget is located. And I'm also going to add another static variable to main screen for the same purpose. In this case, main screen will be at the root of the application. Now in the root widget app, we create an instance of Go router. In its routes property, I will create the list of routes, each of them materialized in an object of type Go route. In the path, we have to define the path to the route. In the case of main screen, it's simple, but for search screen, the path contains the search criteria. For this, we use the colon symbol that will serve as a path parameter. I'm going to modify search screen so that it accepts the search criteria as a constructor parameter. And then we can pass it to it like this. For now, I'm going to show that criteria in the body of the screen so you can see that it works. I'm going to call this route in the submit method to navigate there. We are going to execute and test, but first I have to solve some errors that the console indicates. I have forgotten that we have to change material app to material app dot router and pass the objects that we just created a moment ago. It still does not work. The reason is because there is an error in the path of search screen. I have forgotten to add the initial slash and it still doesn't work. We have to pass this property route information provider. Now it works. If I write criteria, it takes me to the results page. Also note that the criteria appear in the URL, so I can also change the criteria by typing directly in the URL or share it with someone. I'm going to make this change in main screen so I can search by pressing the enter key. Now I'm going to create the necessary classes to make the search request against the API. I remind you that I do this simply to make this application work and not to complicate this tutorial. But in a real scenario, what we will have to do is to move the search to a properly secured server. I'm going to apply the methodology that I have already applied in other tutorials. The first thing is to create the model class that represents each of the results, search result. This contains a title, a description, and the link to the page. Now I will create its network representation, search result entity, inside the network package in the data layer. I will use JSON serializable to auto-generate the JSON mapping classes. If you want to explore a bit more in depth how to do this kind of request, I have a specific tutorial on how to create a data layer. I leave you the link in the video description. As in that tutorial, I will explain you that I'm creating two different model clusters, search result and search result entity that virtually contain the same fields. This is because for me, it's very important the separation between the data layer models and the domain layer models. In the video that I mentioned, you can find more information about it. Now I will create the parse methods by running flutter puff add run build runner. Okay, here we have the auto generated file. The next step is to create a mapping class to convert search result entity to search result.
Now I will create the client class that will be in charge of making the calls. This class will receive the base URL of the API along with the private API key that we will have to have to use it. I'm going to use the DO package in this way to make this get call. According to the documentation, we need to pass in the header these two parameters for it to work. The following thing is to create the repository that receives as parameters the client that I have just created and the mapper class to convert the entities to the models of our application. To be able to use all these classes, first I have to initialize the dependency injection with provider. For this, I'm going to declare this multi provider, in which I will create the lower class to write traces and the search repository. Here, as API key, you have to introduce your private key. If you download the source code of this tutorial or you are following it at the same time that me, remember to do it so that it works. At this point, everything is ready to do the search. The next step is to add the lower class and search repository to search model in order to be able to do the search. I am going to create a method that carries out the search that we will call from the results screen. Now I will create a specific widget for the results. This widget receives a list of results. I'm going to make this part pretty simple since it's just creating views. Nothing special or specific in comparison of creating mobile applications. To get the results, we put everything in a feature builder that will be responsible for making the request synchronously. And meanwhile, we show a loading at the top of the browser. Let's run the application to see if it works. Yes, it seems to work as expected. I'm going to add some more data to the results screen, especially a text button that the user will be able to click and navigate to the desired search result. Still not clickable, 
We have to parse the link to Ajuri and try to launch it via the URL launcher package. Everything is now working. We can type a search criteria and then click on some result. We can also make a direct navigation to a list of results using the URL. This way we could share this search with someone or save it. That's it for this basic Flutter tutorial for websites. You can find the source code in the video description. I hope you find it useful and that you have learned something. If this is the case, please leave this video a like. And if you didn't like it, then let me know how you would improve it or what you are missing in the comment sections. If you want to see more videos and tutorials about Flutter and other mobile technologies, subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching it until the end, and happy coding!